I am joined, as I am almost every Tuesday, by the Fan Morning Show's Blake Murphy, producer. Blake Murphy. Okay, anyway, uh, the next big trade. Goran Dragic and a first for Bogdan Bogdanovic, who is making $18 million per year for the next three years. We just saw him yesterday hit four threes against the Raptors. Can create a little bit, can sort of create for others. Definitely a knockdown three-point shooter. Uh, has some pretty good size for a guard. What say you to this? This is one of my favorite frameworks. I really like Bogdanovic. You saw last night what he can give you as an offensive piece off the bench. Uh, he's, you know, when I said that the Hawks... Even their guys who aren't elite defenders at least have size and some toughness and effort. Yep. He's kind of who you have in mind with that. And I think he fits really, really well. Um, you could probably just drop him in and it'd be fine. Another guy who can do some secondary playmaking at almost three assists a game. Yep. My question here would be, does this need to expand to a larger framework? Because the Hawks are, while they're young... And while this deal does make some sense because the 18 million per for Bogdanovich, two more years after this one, is maybe a deal that they don't love anymore as Bogdanovich nears 30. Um, they are a team that's firmly in the play in race, has eyes on the playoffs, um, probably is in the we should be winning now. And, and like they went to the conference finals last year. Yeah. Uh, I do wonder if a first to get out of some salary would be enough for them. Maybe they can convince Dragic to play there. I don't know. Oh, Lou, yeah. like I'm, Lou, sure he, I'm sure he's willing, man. They, they don't really need the extra point. <laughs> yep. Like, they have Trey DeLon and <laughs> Lou Williams. They don't really need the extra the extra one there. But maybe there's a three-teamer here where yeah. Atlanta yeah. gets something else back and, uh, and the Raptors can nab Bogdanovich. He's probably at the top of my realistic Dragic plus asset targets. It just might have to be a bigger deal. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you there. And I think, you know... Um, Atlanta's a good enough team where I don't think they want to, like, stop the momentum that they had last exactly. year. Uh, the other thing I, I was thinking about is, too, is just they're – so they signed Herter and they signed Trey Young to extensions that kick in next year. They're still on rookie scale deals right now, I believe. So that's really going to be a situation where I'm like, okay, are you really going to be able to manage all your salaries? You know, John Collins is making a lot. Trey's making a lot. You know, Herter's making a lot. And the one guy who doesn't really fit that but is making a lot is, is Bogdanovich. So – um, I'd be pretty happy with that as a Raptors because I'm also pretty confident he can produce off the bench. That's, yeah, that's we, a, that's we've a seen it. Skill set. That's the thing. Like, it, you know, it's one thing to put Gary on the bench, right? There was a discussion about that at the start of the season. We know he wasn't best productive off the bench, and it was like, you know, it's the same thing with Norm. Norm, you put him off the bench, he's giving you like 40 percent shooting and 12 points. You put him in the starting lineup, all of a sudden he's like true shooting 60 percentage and scoring 20 a game. Like, and, and so you know, it takes a certain skill set, and I think Goran or uh, Goran Bogd <laughs> uh, Bogdanovich is a guy who can actually do that. Yeah, his true shooting drops off a tiny bit as a reserve uh, in his career and, and he's basically split his games 50-50 starter reserve um, but you could probably chalk that true shooting percentage change just up to a higher usage like mm -hmm. more self-creation um, probably if we dove in probably more self-creation on the three-point diet specifically yeah. and we're not talking about him being inefficient we're talking about him going from a pretty efficient score to an average efficient score in that bench role so uh, definitely think he's a fit if you can work out a three-teamer yeah, there you go. All right, next trade. Goran Dragic and a first. I, we got to make a nickname for Goran Dragic. So first. I was thinking about this today. I, I don't know. I think it's got to be, we got to figure out a way to do Dragic, Flynn in a first because a lot of the trade suggestions I got for the all your trade ideas are bad had Flynn in there too. Right. Um, People just so, don't want Flynn, huh? Yeah, it's a, so it was it. H BAP. Back in the Nets days, it was Humphreys, Brooks, and a pick yeah. was like the NBA Twitter thing. It even had a hashtag, I'm pretty sure. So we got to, I, I don't know. Yes, yeah, so Dragic and Malachi Flynn both don't have vowels, so I don't I don't know how we're gonna work that out. Yeah, okay, yeah. Send us your uh, suggestions for this this trade package specifically. Um, so yeah, go on in the first. No Malachi in this one for KCP and Thomas Bryant. KCP you have to, for two more or for one more year after this reasonable deal around eleven mil, and then Thomas Bryant signed to an extension, has more long term money. He's coming off of injury this year, hasn't played uh, up to his capabilities just yet, but he had a really good year last year. Yeah, Bryant's, Bryant's a guy that I, I, I've liked. Um, you know, this is a case where he's still only 24, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and again, Team Bird, with OG in Indiana. Bird rights come with you. Uh, yeah, and KCP's got the the clutch thing going. So you you got the oh, little o, right, OG yeah. Gary KCP oh, cl wow. clutch unit somehow. Got ben um, Simmons too. KCP. The other thing too is his deal for next year is only uh, guaranteed for about five mil. So. I, I think KCP at 14 million versus eating 5 million in dead money where the Raptors are, you'd probably still have him on the roster. Yeah. But it's possible that becomes 
you know, tra tradable and it, it only counts for 5 million in trade or whatever. Um, I don't mind that one. I, I don't think I like it as much just because I don't I don't think KCP's as good a player as Bogdanovich. Um, he's been pretty inefficient this year. Yeah. I kind of think he's become like a little bit of the Avery Bradley-ish where the reputation hasn't caught up to the fact that he's not that good a defender anymore or, or yeah. not not great. But maybe, who knows? Maybe you get him out of Washington. He's only 28. Maybe you get him out of Washington. The effort level comes back up. Uh, Thomas Bryant's a fine target as far as, yeah, I was you know, mostly trying to get flyer him. centers. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Gafford would be the guy I'd really like from there, but he's not trade eligible because he signed an extension. So. Right, right. Well, okay. All right. Um, next one. Goran Dragic in a first for Harrison Barnes, who's on uh, for $18 million this year and then also next year, I believe. All right. So, again, basically where I'm at with this, and I, I'll just – this might answer some of the other – um, some of the other ones here. <laughs> By the way, Zub says DFAP. Dragic, Flynn, and a pick. That's pretty good. Not bad. Okay. Well, let's go with the DFAP. Yeah, yeah. DFAP is the, the trade package. So, um, yeah, Harrison Barnes fully guaranteed next year, 18.4. But where I'm at, and, and this these are a lot of the suggestions I got for the uh, mailbag column, is I am at a place where if you attach a first-round pick to Goran Dragic and get back a capable rotation player who's under contract for next year or in some cases you have bird rights on and could resign uh i'm gonna say yes we will and the quibble will be on what protections are on the pick right um i'm probably pushing for lottery protected this year just in case you lose the play-in yep. game I, uh, I could see another team being like okay well you know we'll give you top 10 protected in case you win the lottery but you know because there's not a path to the raptors bottoming out yeah um so i could see some quibbling there but for the most part the dfap package for anyone who's going to help this team this year next, I'm on board with. And the reason for that is the Raptors don't project as a salary cap space team this summer. There's basically, barring a big trade of one of the five core pieces, there's not a path to salary cap space, but they're also like 30 million below the tax based on the current projections. So they're a team that, yeah, you can have internal growth and you can use the mid-level exception, but the mid-level exception is only going to be around $10 million. Yeah. You've still got a gap there where, hey, um, you know, you can fill that via trade, but Drogic is your best route to fill that via trade, and Drogic isn't a trade ship in the offseason. You can't use that dead salary. You don't have a trade exception big enough. So this is kind of the way I framed this this morning on the Fan Morning Show is this is, I think, an opportunity for the Raptors to basically get a jump start on their 2022 free agent work, um, or not even free agent work, just their, your roster building. You're just getting a guy a couple months early and look, some of these teams are going to be eager to get off that contract. So whether it's Barnes, whether it's Bogdanovich, whether it's, um, you know, KCP is a little further down the rankings there. But in most of these scenarios, I'm going to be pretty happy to get a year and a half out of a guy for Dragic and a back half of the first round pick in a shaky draft.